Just imagine, you don't have to spend money on tickets, you won't be queuing up at the airport, you don't need to fly in a plane for several hours. Imagine that a long journey from your home to some exotic country takes a couple of seconds. Yep, we're talking about teleportation. For sure, it'll be a very long time before we see a teleporter at home appliances stores next to a TV and a microwave. But we have already got potential developments that could make teleportation real in the future. Researchers in Potsdam have created an actual teleporter system that can scan an object and kind of send it to a different location. But this is not teleportation per se. This technology is based on a method of destructive scanning combined with 3D printing. So how does it work? The process begins when an object is placed in the sender unit. It's meticulously milled down layer by layer, generating detailed scans at every step. These scans are then transmitted through a secure encrypted channel to a 3D printer at the destination. The printer faithfully recreates the original item layer by layer, effectively achieving a form of teleportation. This way, scientists have a compact, self-contained device that can relocate inanimate objects over distances. You can put an item in the sender unit, enter the address, and press the button. Abracadabra. The system is called Scotty, you know, like the engineer in Star Trek. And it can be useful for companies selling products through home 3D printers. Scotty would create a sort of digital rights management for 3D printed goods ensuring that each purchase results in a unique copy. For those hoping to teleport themselves straight to the beach, it looks like we'll have to wait at least another decade or two or way more than that. But if the teleportation of people was based on the Scotty technology, the machine would have to completely copy the human body. Not just the skeleton, muscle tissue, skin, and hair, but also the brain. Billions of neurons of the most complex computer on the planet would have to be copied exactly. The machine would split you into molecules and atoms, and then scan and copy them at another point. But if this ever happened, could you be sure that it was you who teleported and not your exact twin? Would you agree to such an experiment? <laughs> not me, baby. So let's consider a simpler but still awesome technology. Like a technology that protects houses from earthquakes by raising them above ground. Japan is on the cutting edge of earthquake safety with a groundbreaking technology that lets homes float just above the ground, ready to ride out tremors. A house gets support from a wide airbag that holds the building steady during an earthquake. The system uses compressed air for a sleek high-tech solution. Each home comes with a special foundation, a smart sensor, and an air compressor. The sensor is like the house's watchdog, constantly monitoring for seismic activity. When it detects shaking, it sends an alert to the air compressor outside. In seconds, the house can lift up to 1.2 inches, hovering safely above the ground while the earth rumbles beneath. Once the shaking stops, the air is released and the home gently settles back down. It's like a dance of safety and innovation, ensuring peace of mind during even the fiercest quakes. We all know about airbags in cars, but what about a motorcycle or a bicycle? Yes, people wear a helmet and it's safe, but one Swedish company has invented a bicycle airbag, and the tests of this airbag showed better results than the tests of protective helmets. When a crash happens, the airbag pops up and immediately turns into a one-time superhero, ready to save the day but not be used again. Thanks to some fancy sensors and a snazzy algorithm, it's got your back, literally. By monitoring your moves and springing into action in just one-tenth of a second to cushion that unexpected tumble. Testing has shown that this nifty safety system scores a fantastic 4.5 stars for protection, outshining many other helmets that can barely manage 4. Plus, it's designed to fend off those pesky side impacts and twisting forces. But here's the twist. While this tech is pretty amazing, it's still got some room for improvement. Sadly, the company behind this brilliant invention hit a bump in the road and went belly up. News says they haven't aced all of their crash tests. So while the airbag is a fantastic idea, it looks like there's still some work to be done. Now, 
Meet a technology that will give you a reason to start making videos about birds. This gadget gives you a front row seat to the avian action right from your phone. With its super smart AI bird recognition tech, this feeder automatically captures stunning videos of your feathered friends. The feeder comes packed with a sharp 1080p camera, complete with night vision. So whether it's dawn or dusk, you'll never miss a beat. Or a beak. Rain or shine, this bird feeder is tough enough to handle it all. It's waterproof and dustproof. Plus, with two solar panels on the roof, it soaks up sunshine all day long, so you won't have to mess with batteries. Meanwhile, have you ever heard of Google Jockard technology? The company has recently shut down this project, but it was still a pretty impressive innovation. Jockard inserted touch sensors and haptic feedback right into your clothes. Yep, that meant you could rock smart jackets and backpacks that let you control your phone without even touching it. Wait, are we becoming that lazy? Well, imagine this. A quick double tap plays or pauses your music, a gentle brush on the smart fabric changes the track, and if you cover a sensor for a second, boom! You mute those pesky notifications. How cool is that? It's like having a personal assistant right in your wardrobe. Hey, get out of my pants! Meanwhile, Picture a train gliding on a cushion of air, or a sleek capsule zipping along at 760 miles per hour inside a vacuum tube. It's not sci-fi, it's something called Hyperloop. Inside, it feels like you're in a spaceship. You can kick back in a comfy chair, strap on your seatbelt, and get ready for an incredible ride. As you zoom through at almost the speed of sound, you won't even feel a thing. If you were watching from the side, this train would whiz past you faster than you can blink. It's all about that sleek design. You can think of it like air hockey, where the puck glides effortlessly over a field thanks to a thin layer of air. The puck floats above the surface, moving freely without fiction. That's how the Hyperloop rolls, too. Instead of air coming from the tube, it's coming from the capsule itself, creating a tiny gap between the capsule and the tunnel. An electric motor then sends the train flying. Now, you might wonder about air resistance. At super high speeds, dense air can really slow big objects down. To avoid this, the Hyperloop travels inside a tube where the air density is lower. Special pumps will suck out some of the air along the route, but it won't be a perfect vacuum. Getting that just right takes a ton of energy. And here's a neat trick. A fan on the front of the capsule will push any incoming air underneath it. It's kind of like how pneumatic mail works, where parcels zoom through pipes thanks to air pressure. Solar panels on the tube's roof will help power this whole thing. Elon Musk dreamed this up a while back, but there are some challenges to tackle. Keeping that air cushion just right over long distances is key. Any cracks, bumps, or even a little earthquake could throw a wrench in the works. The technology is not quite ready for prime time, but if engineers nail it, we could travel from Los Angeles to New York, arriving two hours faster than a commercial jet. Now, air taxis and self-driving cars are great for flying high or cruising on smooth roads. But what happens when you need to navigate through rough terrain like mountains, mud, or swamps? Enter Hyundai's incredible innovation, a futuristic car that's ready for any challenge. Instead of wheels, this amazing vehicle has legs. This walking vehicle can tackle tough landscapes with ease and comfort. Each leg is designed with joints that bend, allowing it to conquer everything, from steep hills to the summit of a volcano, hopefully not when it's erupting. So you're at a festival and it's getting really rowdy. Your friend has gone to grab some drinks and you've lost sight of him. Suddenly, his voice sounds loud and clear in your ears, asking what drink he should get for you. Now, are we in a sci-fi movie or what? No, apparently that's what scientists can do now. They've made a sound that can travel through space and reach just your ears in a crowd. Researchers conducted a new study and found a way to make tiny pockets of sound stay in one place. These pockets don't spread around like normal sound, and it means we can now create sound exactly where we want it, like sending it only to one person in a room. 
This discovery might totally change the way we enjoy music, talk to people, or experience sound in games and virtual spaces. You see, sound is just vibration moving through the air in waves. When something moves back and forth, it pushes and pulls the air. That movement creates sound waves. The speed of these waves is called frequency. If this frequency is low, we hear a deep sound, like a bass drum. When the frequency is high, it produces a sharp sound like a whistle. Wee hee! Now, at the same time, it's hard to control where sound goes because of something called diffraction. This just means that sound waves like to spread out as they move. This is even worse with low deep sounds, which have long waves and are harder to keep in one place. Some devices like parametric speakers can send sound in one direction, like a beam. Even then, the sound is still heard along the whole path. It doesn't stay in one spot. But now, researchers have actually figured out how to do that using something called ultrasound and a special trick called nonlinear acoustics. Now, ultrasound is a sound that's too high pitched for people to hear. Anything above 20,000 Hz or 20 kHz. Even though we can't hear it, it still travels through the air like a regular sound. It's used in things like medical scans, for example, ultrasound imaging, and in some industrial tools. So, in their research, scientists use ultrasound to carry normal sound. They made ultrasound waves move through the air quietly, and the actual sound only became audible right where they wanted it to. Now, Usually, sound waves just add up when they meet. That's called linear behavior. Nothing special happens, the sounds just mix together. But when sound waves are strong enough, they can act differently. They combine in a non-linear way, which can create new sounds that weren't there before. Using this knowledge, the researchers took two ultrasound beams, each at a different high frequency. By themselves, these beams were totally silent. But when they met in space, they mixed in this non-linear way and created a brand new sound wave that we could hear. And that sound only appears in the spot where the beams cross. Normally, sound travels in straight lines unless it bounces off of something. But researchers use special materials called acoustic metasurfaces. It allowed them to bend those ultrasound beams as they moved, kind of like how glasses bend light. By changing the timing of the waves really precisely, they can curve the sound around objects and make it reach an exact point, like sending it around a corner and having it land right by your ear. Now, let's say they use one beam at 40 kHz and the other at 39.5 kHz. When these beams meet, they create a sound at the difference between those two, 0.5 kHz or 500 Hz, which is a frequency we can hear. But again, you only hear it right where those beams intersect. Everywhere else, silence. Even so, you could send sound straight to one person without headphones and not disturb anyone around them. Imagine walking through a museum and hearing an audio guide just for you. No headphones needed. Other people nearby could be listening to totally different information without any sound overlapping. In a library, students could listen to lessons without bothering the person next to them. In a car, this tech could let passengers listen to music while the driver hears only the GPS directions. Aw, oh, man! In offices, it could create small zones where people could have private conversations without being overheard. It could also work the other way around, by canceling noise in a certain spot to make things quieter. This could help people concentrate better at work or even reduce noise in busy cities. Now, this isn't something you'll be able to buy just yet. There are still some challenges. For one thing, the sound quality can get a bit distorted because of how the ultrasound waves interact. Also, turning ultrasound into sound you can hear takes a lot of energy, which makes it less efficient right now. Still, the idea of creating audio bubbles is absolutely fantastic. It's not the only recent invention that explores sound. How about AI headphones that allow you to focus on just one voice? You might say that these days, we already have noise-canceling headphones that can block out sound, but you really don't get to choose what to focus on or when. But researchers from the University of Washington have come up with a smart solution. They've built a system called Target Speech Hearing that works with AI and headphones. 
You just look at the person you want to hear for about 3-5 to five seconds, and the headphones will lock on to their voice. After that, the headphones block out all the other sounds around you and play only that person's voice in real time. And even if you're in a loud place or you walk around and aren't facing them anymore, it still works. The headphones aren't for sale yet, but the code is out there and others can experiment with it. Let's dive deeper into how it all works. You wear regular headphones that have built-in microphones. When you want to hear someone, you just press a button and look at them while they're speaking. The system figures out who you want to hear by measuring when their voice hits both microphones at the same time. There's a small margin of error, but it works pretty well. That sound is then sent to a small computer built into the headset. The AI software listens and learns the voice you've chosen. From that point on, the system keeps picking out that person's voice and playing it clearly to you, even if you're both moving around. The more that person talks, the better the system gets at recognizing and focusing on them. They tested this on 21 people, and on average, the sound of the selected voice was rated nearly twice as clear as the normal unfiltered sound. Now, right now, the system can only focus on one speaker at a time, and it has trouble if another loud voice is coming from the same direction. But if the sound isn't clear enough, you can just do another enrollment to help it improve. They're now working on making the text small enough to fit into earbuds and hearing aids. Scientists have also found that the human ear itself has hidden modes. Researchers at Yale University were just trying to figure out how our ears can pick up super quiet sounds, and in the process, they discovered a hidden way that the ear might handle low-frequency sounds. You know those deep, rumbling ones? It helps us hear better without getting overwhelmed by noise. Scientists think that the cochlea, which is the spiral-shaped part of the inner ear, might be using a whole set of low-frequency mechanical modes. Basically, when sound comes into your ear, it creates tiny vibrations that travel through the cochlea. Inside, little hairs on a membrane detect those vibrations and send signals to your brain so you can hear. The problem is that these vibrations can weaken as they travel, making sounds dull or quiet. Now, we already knew that certain parts of these hair cells can boost those signals with a well-timed kick to make the sounds clearer, kind of like a built-in amplifier. But now, it looks like the ear has another trick up its sleeve. It can also tune and boost sound more broadly, especially for low-frequency sounds. And it does this without making up fake sounds or overreacting. New models show that the hair cells can work not just individually, but also in larger groups, all at once. This lets the ear adapt and control how it processes vibrations. For lower pitch sounds, even big sections of the membrane in the cochlea can work together to keep the sound clear and avoid overwhelm in the system. This discovery might explain how we're able to hear such quiet low sounds in the first place. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.